What's up, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the Bcrypt password class in Ruby and how it is used to hash and store passwords encrypted in the database. Let's talk about a user. So if I have my myself user.find by email, Okay, I get back this user object. And if I tried to call u.encrypted password, this is some secret string that no one else knows about or can break or whatever. And this string was created by Bcrypt. And it is a one way, it uses like a one way hashing algorithm. So you can't actually reverse this to figure out what the password is. There's not a way to go backwards from the Bcrypted hash. What you can do is go forwards and check to see if a plain text password matched this password. One thing that we might do is say, let's create a new password for this user and say user.password is equal to, we're gonna say testing one, two, three. Okay, so this is gonna be our new password. We're gonna say u.save bang, and that is going to update our u. Uh, our user's password. Right now it's stored in memory. So it's just written to a an instance variable on the user and that's for validation to do things like, hey, did they enter a password that had enough numbers and letters and characters and things like that? So we need the raw plain text password in memory for at least a short time, but usually that's only for the duration of a single request when someone is signing up or logging in, logging out. So if we say, let's just clear this again. And we will say that we want to grab like the same user find by email is, okay. If we try to look at the encrypted password here, again, it looks like this giant hash, right? And so under the hood, this is using the bcrypt password class. And this has a few different methods on it. You can call bcrypt password.create and you can pass in some my password and this will create a new password hash so we can call this a bunch of times and what you'll notice is that every single time that we call it even though we're passing in the same my password string it's giving us back a different hashed value so there's some like seed number in there and it's coming up with a uh, different information but you'll also notice that if we grab one of these passwords so let's grab the the, the last one and we look at pass.class, the class of this thing is actually a bcrypt password, but it looks like a string. It is stringy and is stored in the database as this string value. So if we were to just say pass.2s, then we can work with it as if it were a string. Right now it's converted into a string. So let's say the pass2 is pass.2s. What we can do now is we can initialize an instance of bcrypt password with this string value. So we can say, nope, bcrypt password.new. So instead of calling dot create, we're going to call dot new and we're going to initialize it with an instance of a string. You can also use an instance of a password. And now what we're getting back is a bcrypt password object. Okay, so the bcrypt password object overrides the equals method to check to see if this bcrypt password that is initialized by the hash is equal to some raw plain text thing. So here we can say my password, right? And now that says true. Is it equal to not my password? It is not equal to not my password. So what's happening under the hood here is it is bcrypt has its own way of confirming whether or not these hashes match. So we don't have to deal with that. All we need to do is know how to work directly with the password object or the, this bcrypt password type. So another thing we can do is check to see is the hash valid for pass two. Maybe it's valid hash. And that comes back as true. So that tells us whether or not like the string is valid. If we look again at pass, which again is an instance of bcrypt password. This has a couple different methods on it. So we can look at the cost for computing this. We can look at the check sum. We can look at the version. So they, they are gonna have like different versions of how things are encrypted. And depending on like how many times you want to run 
the sort of like encryption algorithm or whatever, you can increase the cost for creating one of these. You'll notice that when we create an instance of one of these hashes, or when we check, it takes a second to do that. And that's because it's, I guess we can also look at the salt. When it is creating an instance of a password and hashing it, it takes a little bit of compute power. That's so that you can't, it's to avoid brute forcing a bunch of different passwords. So if we say another, another one, like you notice there is like a brief moment where it is pausing as it's trying to create that. And there is definitely a way that you can increase the number of like your cost of creating these so that it's just like more rounds of encryption. So here on the Bcrypt docs, there's a bunch of other stuff that you can look into. But yeah, it's like a one-way hash. So like the stuff that's stored in the database is all stored as encrypted at rest. And so this is how this thing works. It says you is user.find by email. And then it says bcrypt password.new u.encrypted password. So that's going to initialize an instance of bcrypt password. And then it's going to say, is this equal to whatever we made our password up here. Yeah, testing one, two, three. And if it's true, that's when we're allowed to log in. So this is like whether or not we have like passed in the same or a value that will hash to the same thing. Yeah, there's details about how the hashing algorithm works, but again, it's one way, it's a one way situation. An alias for that equals method is to use this is password. So we can call dot is password question mark and that is an alternative. So yeah, Bcrypt is pretty industry standard in terms of encryption and storing stuff at rest. So yeah, that's Bcrypt and password hashing. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.